Hey everybody, Sarah here. So today I'm going to begin the December typical video that I do where I go over all of the different prices of all the different morphs from this year. Before I get started, I do want to say one, I'm sorry I haven't gotten a video up for the last few weeks. I've been sick and you can probably still hear it in my voice. I was not even able to speak last week when I normally would have been able to record a video and <clears throat> it's barely working now but I will do my best to get through it. Also, before we get started, I wanna thank all the members on this channel for helping to make everything possible. You guys are amazing, you are my lifeline, and I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, if anybody else would like to become a member, you can click join under any video to do so. Here are the perks if you would like to see what you get for the different levels. Also, thank you to Reptilinks for helping to support this channel. If you guys would like to get great food for your snakes and get a discount in the process, you can use my code sarahsnake 27 at checkout at reptilinks.com for that. Also, remember, I have a website, sarahsnakeshop.com, where I sell corn snakes and corn snake accessories. Uh, I'm also moving most of my corn snake sales over to Morph Market, so please check me out there if you want to see what I have available. I will have a few more days of shipping left as of the time this video comes out. So if you're wanting a Christmas present, now is the time. This video is going to be all about the single gene mutations, as well as any like valuable het mutations that we have in corn snakes and what their prices were over the last year. Went through Morph Market as well as many other sites at four different times during this selling season uh, and gathered all of this information over a long period of time. Just keep in mind that these are United States prices and they're also only baby prices. So this is not going to be the same over in the UK or Europe or anywhere else. It's This is just the US as well. It's only the baby snakes we're not talking about, yearlings, etc. I just want to mention here that this is in no way trying to get anybody to change their prices. This is just me collecting data partially for myself and partially to share with you guys because uh, I find it interesting. I hope you find it interesting. And I also find it helpful to maybe project uh, what morphs might be more valuable in the future as well. That's just for me. Um, and this is, like I said, in no way criticizing any prices that anybody has put up or anything like that. I'm going to do things a little bit differently this year. Uh, the last few times I've done this, I've done it like by morph, but this year I'm going to do it by price so that you guys can kind of see the price ranges a little bit better. And so for the lowest bracket of prices, we actually have a $65 to $80 range. And in that range is going to be your normals, hypos, and anerythristics. Anerythristics, they were not a very popular morph. In fact, it's one of the hardest morphs for me to move this year. To me, it does make sense that these morphs are in this bracket. I know I've talked about how uh, normal and hypo are usually going to go for about the same price. Same with mask. Uh, yes, hypo and mask are morphs, and normal really isn't a morph so much, but they all kind of look very similar, and so generally speaking, they are going to sell for roughly the same prices. In the next bracket, we have an $85 to $95 range, and the morphs in this are going to be your Tesseras and your Amelanistics. Uh, once again, Tessera continues to drop in price. I know last year and even the year before, I was baffled at the cheap price of Tesseras, but because it's a dominant mutation, it's going to proliferate much more quickly than a recessive mutation, and because of supply and demand, typically, uh, its price is just going to drop a lot faster, and so it makes sense to me that it is now the cheapest pattern mutation that we see on the market. And of course, a melanistic being about 10 to $15 more than a normal is pretty typical. The a melanistic is very close to what it was last year. I think the average was also close to 100 last year for it. And the Tessera last year, I think was in the like 110, 120 range. And so the Tessera, like I said, has just continued to drop in price. I wonder how that's going to affect in the future. I do remember when Tessera first kind of came on the scene and someone said to me, I wonder how long it's gonna take before Tessera's are cheaper than normals. And uh, at the rate that it's going, it could even be next year. Of course, I hope not as someone who breeds them and sells them and loves them. I of course don't want their price to drop, but that does seem to be the trend that we're looking at right now. The next price that we're looking at isn't really a range, it's just the average of $100. Uh, and the reason that I just did the $100 here and not a range is because so many were averaging out to be almost exactly $100 this year. And the list of those is kind of surprising. Uh, we have Extreme Okatee, Caramel, Buckskin Okatee, Hep Palmettos, 
uh, Reverse Okatees, and Motleys. These all average to be about 100 uh, over the last four months or so, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. I've kind of picked up this information along the way, like I said, uh, but this all, these all have averaged out to be about $100, and I will tell you in a few minutes why that is surprising. But especially when it comes to extreme Okatees, I thought it was very weird that they were cheaper than just Okatees, and Okatees are actually coming up later on. And this is the first time I think I've ever seen extreme Okatees on average selling cheaper than regular Okatees. Now I'm not saying that that's going to be every single time. Again, these are all just averages, but this year on average extreme Okatees did sell for closer to $100 and a regular Okatee usually sold for a bit more. And again here we see a reverse Okatee selling for a little bit more than just a regular Amel. That makes sense. I was a little surprised at the Het Palmetto being here at $100 because Palmetto is still going for hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a visual version of it. So it seems to me that a Het version would be a little bit uh, more expensive, but um, the Het Palmettos were averaging very close to $100 this year. Then Motley again being about $20 more on average than like a normal. That also makes sense, although most of the normals were kind of more down in the $60 to $70 range, and then most of the Motleys were up near 100 so we're looking at a bit of a $30 to $35 difference just with adding that one pattern mutation, which I thought was really interesting. And of course, Caramel being the same price, that also makes sense to me. In fact, a lot of Caramels are not really selling super well, at least not from my experience this year. The fact that it even got up to $100 in the average was a little surprising to me, but uh, it kind of makes sense, comparatively speaking. Uh, now the buckskin Okatees, I thought it was a little weird. I've never actually put buckskin in one of these before. I just saw a lot of buckskin for sale this year, and they were averaging 100, which I thought was I thought it was strange that the buckskins were again selling on average cheaper than a regular Okatee. Now the next price range that we have is between 115 and 125, and in this we have the Het Scaleless, which again kind of weird that Het Scaleless were on average more expensive than a Het Palmetto. Still, uh, the regular Okatees were in this category, as well as both Sunkist and Lava. And I thought it was very interesting. Lava usually sells for a bit more money, same with Sunkist. The fact that they were averaging between 115 and 125 was a little surprising to me. Um, I wasn't surprised that Okatees were selling for this amount, but I was surprised that Okatees were selling for this amount, and then the Buckskin and Extreme Okatees were selling for less than average, uh, less on average than just the regular Okatees. I, I just find it kind of fascinating. And again, we do see a bit of a price drop in the Het Scaleless. I believe last year they were a bit more expensive. And then, of course, the year before that, they were even more expensive. And so we are seeing a bit of a drop off in the Het Scaleless. Uh, Het Scaleless is not really probably going to make it onto this list next year if the price continues to drop. Because once a Het doesn't really add any more value, there's no point in putting it in a list like this. Right now, Het Scaleless and Het Palmetto still sell for more than a normal. But if we get to a point where, on average, the Het Scaleless or the Het Palmettos are selling for the same amount as a normal, it will definitely not be going on this, like they won't have the special spot on the list anymore. The next is our $140 to $160 range. The single jean and hats that we were talking about, um, they didn't really have any averages between like $125 and $140. And so I'm just skipping to the $140 to $160. And that's where we have really nice Miamis and some extreme reverse Okatees. Uh, and this makes sense to me. I feel like I feel like a really good Miami, at least, is definitely worth that 140. Uh, I feel like the extreme Okati might be worth a little more, uh, but I wanted to sort of put these two together because I was seeing Miamis that went up to 160 and higher. I also saw some extreme reverse Okatees that were all the way down in the 140s and a little lower. So on average, they both sort of fit in this in this place. And here again, we have another jump to uh, $170 to $200 morphs. Surprisingly, uh, the two morphs in this category are Stripe and Lavender. Uh, I was not really expecting these two to be this high up there. However, I did notice that there was a huge spike in Stripes this year. Stripes always seem to sell really well. I think I mentioned that before. But anything Striped, Anne Striped, Lavender Striped, Amel Striped, they all seem to sell uh, for a lot more money and they sell a lot quicker. People really love stripes just in general. And once again, we have both stripe and lavender, lavender being another very popular morph, um, both reaching that between $170 to $200 range on average. 
And the last on this single jean list is our $350 to $400 morphs. And I know, once again, we've made a very large jump, but of the single jean and hats that we have on this list, uh, there really wasn't anything in between average-wise. So between our $350 and $400, we have what you might expect, and that is scaleless and Palmetto. These two are still pretty well holding their prices. I know that uh, I got a lot of flack a couple of years ago, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, for saying that the average Palmetto was selling for like $450. Well, it was. I wasn't making up that price. I wasn't trying to change uh, what people were charging. Uh, that's just what the average price ended up being, and this year it's even a little bit lower, where some are, like I said, in between the 350 to 400. Scaleless still seems to be pretty much the same, if I recall correctly. I haven't looked at all the numbers from last year. You're welcome to go and check out those old videos if you would like to do that. I will link the playlist up above if you want to see all the videos that are in this series prior to this and, like, compare prices. Now, of course, I am not going to be able to get to every single gene mutation that is out there. Of course, there were many others that were single gene mutations that were available this year, but either there just weren't enough of them to get an average or I couldn't find any available at all, and so I'm not going to put them on a list if I can't even find any examples of them. Uh, but these are the ones that we have, and I think it's really interesting to go back and look and see what prices that they used to be versus the prices that they are now, and then maybe try to see what might be popular next year. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. There will be uh, at least two others like this this month, and uh, close to Christmas, I will be doing the Corn Snake Morph Deep Dive on the Christmas mutation. I have learned so much more about this morph and I'm actually really excited to do that for you guys. Hopefully by next week my voice will be back to normal and uh, I will hopefully see you then.